Hi all, Ziv from Elemental here. Today I'll talk about custom positioning and how it relates to responsive behavior. I'll show you how to use the custom width and offsets units for absolute positioned objects. I'll show you what each unit represents and how it affects responsive behavior on your website designs. Let's start off with working in the grid. As you can see, everything is automatically responsive and proportionate. It has you covered. When we set an object to absolute, this changes. Working with custom positioning is more tricky. We need to understand responsive behavior in order to know what settings to change to get the results we seek. You can use various combinations of settings with your designs that will result in different responsive behavior. Therefore, it's important to understand the basics first. Let's start off in this section here. As you can see, the main section's content width is boxed and set to 1000 pixels. And the min height is set to 100 VH. VH stands for view height and is a relative unit. It relates to the height of the viewport. So, setting it to 100 VH means that it takes up 100% of the viewport's height. As you can see, setting it to 50 VH takes up half of the viewport's height. This applies for tablet and mobile as well. Let's go over to the pink cube. I'll change the position to absolute. And, as you can see, the moment the cube is set to absolute, it is removed from the flow of elements on the page. So it doesn't take up any height in the column anymore. The image widget's width is inherited from the column it's in. I'll go ahead and set a custom width. As you can see, the cube jumped to the left. This is because the horizontal orientation is set to left by default. You can check out a video explaining this concept in a link in the description below. Now, let's start with the pixel unit. As you can see, it starts small, and when it reaches 290 pixels, the max size has been reached. The width of the image widget increases, but the image stays the same size. As you can see, when we reach 1000 pixels, it matches up exactly with the 1000 pixel content width we set before. I'll go ahead and set the width to 100 pixels. Let's check out what happens with its size in responsive tablet mode. It remained the same 100 pixels, because the custom width setting is default, so it inherits what we defined for desktop. As you can see, it's still positioned at the top left of the column. The same goes for mobile. Now, let's go back to desktop and check out the other units. I'll go ahead and delete the values and set it to percent. The image widget width is now in relation to the column it's in, where 100% is the full width of the column. As you can see, setting it to 50% takes up half of the column. Now, let's check out tablet mode. Just like before, it remained 50% because the setting is default, so it inherits what you define for desktop. Now let's check out VW. VW stands for View Width. The image widget's width is now in relation to the viewport's width. I'll set the cube to 50 VW. As you can see, it isn't 50% of the column it's in, but 50% of the viewport's width. You can see it better when I move the cube to the left side of the viewport. I'll duplicate the cube and align it to the right. They are both set to 50 VW and together make up the entire width of the viewport. I'll change the right cube to 25VW and duplicate it. Align it up to the right, and as you can see, the two right cubes make up the 50VW together. Now that we understand the custom width settings, let's check out the horizontal and vertical offset units. First, I'll go ahead and delete the cubes on the right. For this example, I set the custom width of the remaining cube to 118 pixels, so it fits exactly in the column. This will make things a bit easier to understand. I'll go ahead and reset its position by setting the offsets to zero. The cube's orientations are set to the top left of the column, making this its starting point. As you know, the column's width is a thousand pixels. Okay, great. Let's start with the horizontal offset pixel unit. As you can see, sliding the horizontal offset to 500 pixels positions the cube in the center of the column. Setting it to a thousand positions it at the end of the column. Now let's check out the vertical offset. The same concept applies. As you can see, the column's height appears to be 110 pixels. OK, cool. Let's reset to zero and check out the percent unit. It's relative to the column it's in, meaning that setting it to 50% positions it in the middle of the column, and 100% at the end. The same goes for the vertical offset. Cool. Now, let's reset again and change it to VW. I'll set it to 50. As you can see, the distance from the starting point to the cube is exactly half of the screen's width. 
The same goes for the vertical offset. I'll set it to 25 VW. As you can see, the distance from the top of the column to the cube is exactly a fourth of the viewport's width. OK, now for the VH, the view height. I'll go ahead and set the horizontal offset to 25. Now, the distance from the starting point to the cube is exactly one fourth of the viewport's height. Like before, the same goes for the vertical offset as well. OK, great. Now that we understand all the settings, let's reset again and check out how they affect responsive behavior. I'll go ahead and set the cube's orientation to bottom and right. And I'll move the cube outside the column. Here is good. Now, let's check out the responsive tablet mode. Wait, what just happened? Where did the cube go? As you can see, the cube is just hiding on the side. This is because the cube always stays at the same distance from the right side of the column. Here's an extra tip for you. Elementor has a nifty feature to hide the extra white space you see here. In the section Settings, under Layout, go ahead and set Overflow to Hidden. This property specifies whether to clip content or to add scroll bars when an element's content is too big to fit in a specified area. In our case, the main section. This doesn't help us though because now the cube is clipped as well. So I'll go ahead and set it back to default. The most intuitive solution is to just reposition it by changing its offset values specifically for tablet and mobile. See how the white space disappears? But is this the best thing to do? What if some tablets have different breaking points? I'll show you what I mean. Let's update and preview the page. For this example, I'll go ahead and enter the browser's inspect responsive mode. As you can see, the cube is positioned on the right side of the column. I'll start changing its dimensions. And as you can see, the cube still creates this white space. When I continue resizing, the cube jumps to the position I defined for responsive tablet mode. As you can see, custom positions for tablet and mobile does work, but it isn't optimal responsive behavior. Pay attention that it also depends on your design and what you want to achieve. You could, for example, just set the section's content width to full, and when you position the cube at the distance you want, it will still be in the column. This way, it won't create the white space when resizing. It's important to keep this in mind when designing your page. OK, so in order to know how we can improve responsive behavior, we need to understand the possible settings. So let's go through them and see how they affect our design. For this example, I'll use this dark section over here. The content width is set to full, and I've given it a minimum height of 50 VW, meaning its height will take up half of the viewport's width. This is a good way to design with responsive behavior in mind. I'll go ahead and set the column position to stretch. This way, when we add custom positioned objects, they are inside the column and will make it easier for us to work with. I'll drag in an image widget. This pink circle is great. I'll give it a custom width, set its position to absolute, and move it to the middle of the column. I'll duplicate it and choose this cool rocket. I'll resize it and position it in the middle of the circle. First, let's go over the default settings. As you can see, the custom width and offsets are in pixels. Now, let's check out the tablet mode. As you can see, the images stay together because they maintain the same size. The rocket's width, for example, in tablet mode is set to default meaning it will inherit the custom width we set for desktop in pixels. But they don't stay in the middle of the column. The images move to the right and down, because they maintain the same offset distance in pixels from the left and top sides of the column. For the exact same reason, the images create white space like we saw before when we're in mobile mode. We can change the size and position to fit our design for tablet, but we will have the same responsive behavior we saw with the pink cube. It's not optimal. Perhaps using a relative unit like percentage is better, because then they resize together relative to the column they're in. So first, let's delete the offset values in tablet mode that were automatically set when we drag the images to the middle. I'll go ahead and delete the custom width as well, and set it back to default, so it's inherited from the desktop settings. Let's go back to desktop mode and check out the percentage unit. First, I'll reset the circle and rocket, and set it to percent. I 
I'll set their custom width and move them to the center of the column. Okay, let's check it out. As you can see, this works well. The circle and rocket resize together and stay in the center of the column. The percentage unit is relative to the column. So if I would change the section's content width to boxed, things will change. As you can see, the rocket and circle start off in the center of the column, but the smaller the width gets, the more they separate and move. This is because their custom width and offsets are relative to the column. So the width changes you see here directly impact the size and position. In order to prevent this behavior, I could use the VW and VH units, because they aren't relative to the column. Let's set the section's content width to 1000 pixels. And like before, reset the circle and rocket. I'll change the units to VW. And for this example, I'll place the objects on the near top left corner of the column. I'll set them to stick out of the column a little, like so. Now, let's check it out in tablet mode. As you can see, the objects stay together and slightly move to the right and down. This is because the 1000 pixel content width now takes up even more width in tablet mode. This change is even more apparent in mobile mode. This is because the vertical and horizontal orientations are set to left and top. So changes in the viewport's width will directly affect the position of the object in relation to the top left side of the column. I am happy with this result because it preserves the aspect ratio and this inherent responsive behavior makes it easier for me to adjust for mobile and tablet. Now I have better responsive control over my custom positioned objects. Keep in mind that when using custom positioning, it's best to start from desktop mode and make the responsive behavior optimal from the outset. This way, you will have less work making adjustments for mobile. Well, that's it. Now you know how the custom width and offset units work and have a basic understanding of using them with responsive behavior in mind. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tutorials. See you later.